Tesla uh, on the company's new agreement with car rental giant Hertz. A few months out of bankruptcy, uh, said it's going to order 100,000 Tesla Model 3s. Those purchases, total value of about $4.2 billion. In October 2021, Hertz publicly announced it intended to buy 100,000 Tesla vehicles. Shares of both companies soared. Check out shares of Tesla soaring to all-time highs today, launching the company into the trillion-dollar club for the first time. First mover advantage aside, it would help Hertz distinguish itself in an industry plagued by commoditization, where the color of a brand's signage seems to be the only differentiator. If you or I went to the airport and we went to the green counter, the red counter, or the yellow counter, we're still going to get the same white Toyota Camry. But only a couple of years in, while the rental company is posting strong finances, its EV strategy is facing some serious challenges. Pricing troubles, skyrocketing repair costs, and low resale values. There's no technology change, EVs included, that run a straight line without some hiccups and challenges. And that's this. The line from A to B is not always straight. Meanwhile, big rental rivals hung back on EVs. Hertz's investors are divided over what to do next, either kill or at least pause the EV initiative or try to find a way to make it work. Hertz, a more than century old rental company, filed for bankruptcy in May 2020 as demand for rentals dried up during the coronavirus pandemic. Even before the pandemic, Hertz had a number of challenges. Sales grew from about $7.6 billion in 2010 to a peak of about $11 billion in 2014, but fell to about $9.8 billion in 2019. Pre-bankruptcy, the stock had been highly volatile, climbed as high as $109.48 in 2014, and sank as low as $3.07 the day before Hertz filed. In addition to the Hertz rental brand with stands at airports or parking garages, the company has a number of other businesses, including car sales, truck, van, and equipment rentals, and a leasing division. It also acquired the Dollar and Thrifty brands in 2012. The company operates in 160 countries and jurisdictions around the world. 13 months after filing for Chapter 11, the company emerged from bankruptcy, unveiling big plans. When you're coming out of a process like that, you need a story to tell investors. Uh, people want to know what your, what your strategy is, what's going to be different this time. Some moves were expected, securing more corporate accounts, like a big partnership with American Express, cleaning up its dollar and thrifty brands, which had suffered from underinvestment, and a pledge to focus more on cost efficiency. But the big move was its plan to buy 100,000 Teslas, mostly Model 3 sedans, for its U.S. and European operations. It also planned to set up about 3,000 fast chargers for 65 markets. Both Tesla and Hertz share prices popped on the news. Hertz jumped 10% over the previous close, and over the course of the next week rose another whopping 29%. Tesla shares rose 12.7% on the day over the previous close, and then another 14.4% through November 2nd, the day Tesla CEO Elon Musk took to Twitter to break some news. They didn't have a fleet deal. They didn't have a special contract with Tesla. And Elon Musk let all the excitement kind of go viral before he, one week later, clarified that Hertz didn't have a fleet contract with Tesla. He added that he was surprised by the stock pop since he thought the Hertz deal has had zero effect on Tesla's economics. According to its 2022 10K, Hertz has large-scale acquisition agreements with Tesla, Polestar, and General Motors, but the company neither denied nor confirmed the details with CNBC. At the time of the filing, the goal was to convert one quarter of Hertz's fleet to electric. Hertz doesn't break out the amount of money it spends on EVs, but we can make some assumptions. In 2022, the company ended the year with 428,700 vehicles in the Americas and 118,700 international. 9% of its fleet 
or about 49,266 vehicles, were Teslas. This isn't perfect, but if you assume Hertz paid about $50,000 on average for each Tesla, as some analysts who follow the company think, that would be about $2.5 billion in Tesla vehicles alone. That doesn't include any other infrastructure or expenses Hertz had to undertake in 2022. Overall, globally, it spent $10.6 billion on new vehicles that year. This EV strategy really was the one that kind of took off and Hertz became, I guess, kind of affiliated with that. That became kind of their calling card uh, in the market and, and something that a lot of folks kind of kind of latched onto and said, hey, this seems like a really interesting story. I'm going to follow this. These three car rental firms control about 95% of the market. Hertz was the only one to make an EV push this big. Hertz's intention was to be a first mover. The industry has received some pressure to green its fleets. And the idea was that it would help its corporate customers too. Large organizations around the globe uh, really uh, are interested in uh, choosing EVs for their employees. It really helps them to meet their own ESG goals. And we see a lot of um, you know, corporate demand both here in North America as well as in Europe. Hertz also saw an opportunity to introduce EVs to ordinary consumers who might be curious but reluctant to commit to a purchase outright. In the leisure space, there is also a lot of organic demand, uh, certainly for customers who are perhaps curious about whether or not an EV would fit with their lifestyle. And so choosing an electric vehicle like a test drive uh, is something that we see. And we see uh, situations where Customers are choosing, you know, an EV both for long road trips um, as well as for, you know, short, shorter drives. In 2016, Hertz struck a partnership with Uber to start renting out fuel burning vehicles to rideshare drivers. Hertz considered the electrification of rideshare a fast approaching requirement, not merely an option. New York City's Green Rides program requires 100% of rideshare trips to be either zero emissions or wheelchair accessible by 2030. Despite an investment of at least $2.5 billion, the expected demand from corporate and private customers has not materialized. Consumers generally, um, you know, still have a little bit of anxiety, both about range and some of the, you know, know how when it comes to EVs. Uh, and to that end, that has really informed our strategy around building resource and really helping with that challenge. Demand that did arise tended to come from customers who were already Tesla or EV owners. What has worked, sort of, is the ride-sharing segment of the business. As of December 2022, 65 to 70% of the EVs in Hertz's fleet were utilized by rideshare drivers. They didn't want those things sitting around. They're very expensive cars. And so it made all the sense in the world to Hertz, right, to, to say, hey, we're we're going to extend, essentially extend our, our normal rideshare rental program and we're going to throw Teslas into it and other EVs. I mean, I think from my perspective, Hertz and Uber has been a great partnership. I think that Uber really needs Hertz and Hertz really needs Uber. Harry Campbell is the founder and CEO of The Rideshare Guy, a website and podcast dedicated to Uber and Lyft drivers and other gig economy workers. There's really no better use case in my mind than an Uber driver who's going to put 1,500 miles a week on their car to not only rent a car, but to rent an electric vehicle. Renting to rideshare companies is cost effective. There's a one week minimum and costs of turning a vehicle are substantially cut. The challenge, though, is that Hertz gets about $43 per day, rather than the $75 to $90 it gets for a consumer or corporate rental. There's also been a disproportionate number of accidents. While Hertz says routine maintenance costs on EVs are lower, the cost of repairing the damage from accidents is twice what it would be for an internal combustion vehicle. This is partly a Tesla problem. A lot of their critics will say, meaning, They've grown the number of vehicles on the road without investing enough service centers and over-reliance on their mobile service fleet to fix those vehicles. And so you'll see these long wait times to get you know, spare parts put into the cars. You'll see long wait times to even get an appointment. That's, 
That's only one tiny piece of why EVs are expensive to repair. In order to buffer some of the higher repair costs, the rental giant has taken on more of them in-house while also negotiating for cheaper parts. Hertz expects costs will drop over time. However, repair costs have not come down as fast as the company had expected. In another move to try to limit damage and repair costs, the company shifted some of its EVs meant for rideshare into its leisure business. But this left a glut of unused cars in that segment and lowered revenue. The collapse of used EV values is another problem. They've fallen about 30% between September 2022 and September 2023. The main reason? Tesla, which controls more than 60% of the new EV market, drastically cut prices on its cars, driving down the value of everything else. This is important because about every two years, rental companies turn cars over to the used market. The MSRPs on the cars Hertz bought has since dropped by about a third. The opportunity to dump the car, so to speak, is not really one that's available to us, and frankly speaking, not one that I would take. There's positive margin to be had in the existing fleet of cars, and we will buy our price down over time as these cars have fallen in price. And by the way, we'll buy more than just Teslas. These companies have to report the depreciation of their assets in their financial statements even before they sell the car. So falling used EV prices hurt Hertz's balance sheets, even for cars that are still in their fleet. Hertz claims that taking into account depreciation, collision, damage, and revenue per vehicle, Hertz's EV fleet is costing the company several EBITDA margin points compared to ICE vehicles. Investors are split over what to do next. Some want Hertz to pause the EV program or abandon it altogether. Others say Hertz should persist. Hertz CEO Stephen Scher, who inherited the EV plan when he took office in February 2022, said in the company's 2023 third quarter earnings call that it would be reducing the share of Teslas in Hertz's fleet in favor of those made by GM and other legacy automakers with stronger parts and service networks. In its rideshare business, Hertz is only renting Teslas to more experienced drivers in order to lower the likelihood of damage. I've driven a Tesla for the past seven years. These cars have a lot of power. I'm not going to lie. I almost got into two or three accidents when I first got my Tesla Model 3 because I wasn't used to it. And so I think one cool thing that Hertz is doing now that we've seen is they actually require drivers to have a minimum number of trips. So you can't be a brand new driver and get into a Model 3 anymore, which I think is smart. Cars Hertz had previously shifted to leisure where they languished, are now back in rideshare. Hertz's overall rideshare rental business has grown 50% year over year. The higher rideshare demand has brought the company more revenue per unit, better rented than sitting on the lot. And by reducing the glut in the leisure business, Hertz can resume premium pricing in that segment. We do see really nice demand, uh, certainly across large travel companies. Um, hotels and airlines, as well as large associations here in North America. And that's that's a, that's a natural organic uh, demand for these EVs that we see coming through. In 2023, it staged drive events at airports, including the Los Angeles International Airport and Denver International. It does the same on corporate campuses. The company is also putting together instructional videos and other online content to inform customers about driving EVs. Yes, Hertz has also taken a leadership role in building out uh, charging infrastructure, and we have partnered with large energy companies like BP to do exactly that. And, and the objective is to build out large scale, fast charging uh, for the uh, public as well as for our own customers. Um, and we're going to see Giga Hubs uh, appear at airports like Houston uh, and LAX upcoming. Share has also said that cheaper EV prices benefit the company going forward as it continues to acquire them. Overall, Hertz isn't exactly struggling. In the third quarter 2023, it pulled in $2.7 billion in revenue, a record. Gasoline vehicle rentals, which make up more than 85% of Hertz's fleet, are profitable. Overall demand was 16% higher than in the previous quarter. Operating costs are in line with expectations. As inflation starts to subside, some costs are coming down. Billion dollars of EBITDA in 2023, um, and they're still solidly positive, and you know, they, they they still generate ample cash flow. They could potentially buy back stock. So you know, it's not um, it, it's not a case of hey, the company is getting totally um, it, 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 
get wiped out or anything by this. It's just, it, it, it just, it's obviously crimping profits. Hertz is not the only company doing well. The whole industry is thriving. The only difference is competitors don't have the pressure of such a large and struggling EV fleet. The hope is that its investments now will give it a leg up over competitors if and when EVs take off in car rental. There are reasons to think it will. It takes at least a year or two to turn over EVs in a fleet. Hertz thinks it might be able to hold on to the cars for three to four years. So Hertz's competitors are not going to be able to match Hertz's EV fleet overnight, nor will they immediately be able to match Hertz's investments in infrastructure.